All right, let me get this up on the screen here. I'm gonna go through what we did last time, if you don't mind. I'm gonna show you some cards. Mm -hmm. And you're going to give me a rating system for how good you think these cards are and how relevant you think they are. And, All right, I uh, like this. I feel like I'm much more knowledgeable now. I pro yeah, I, you if these cards exist in Ultra Rare, I've seen them, I've read them, so I feel like I'm gonna be pretty good at this now. So this card might be a little bit before your time. And this is called Maxi. This card says that it's a it's a hand trap, if you're familiar with that. It, you can mm -hmm. activate this during either player's turn, from sending it to your hand to the grave at any point. And then this turn, every time your opponent special summons a monster, you draw a card. Yeah, this card's nutty. This is a this is a five out of five. This is an S tier card. Anything that lets you get hand advantage like that is kind of nuts, right? Even in the current meta? Yeah, I suppose. But what if I just activate this and then my opponent just doesn't special summon? Well, can't you do it? Can you chain it off of a special summon? So you can just, from your hand when they start like a combo, you can just play this and then that kind of yeah, kills their combo, them. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But what if they yes. just stop? Well, then you, you're in a pretty good position. If they don't finish their combo, they don't set up their board. I think you're pretty set. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. This card is currently banned and has been banned for, I think, like two or three years now for us. But in Japan, actually, fun fact, this is at three, which is... Really? In the OCG? Yeah. Yeah, in the OCG, this is a three of, oh. which is kind of crazy. But yeah, this is Maxi, pretty easy five uh, five star card there. Next one, I don't know if you've seen this guy yet. Have you seen this? Yep, that's uh, from the most recent ten. Well, not the most recent that comes out tomorrow, yeah. but like the one before that. Yeah, this is Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. It can't be destroyed. It can't be targeted. It can burn mm -hmm. and destroy your monsters, and it can discard a card to negate and destroy a card. Where would you put this, this on the scale? This card is. Busted. Well, so when I read this, this card to me, I didn't even know how to deal with it. So I had to look it up. And apparently, like, the only thing you can really do is, like, tribute it off your opponent's field, right? So, like, a, a kaiju or even, like, old school lava golem. The card's fucking nutty. Yeah. It's, uh, it's only the only way to get it off the field is to, like, remove it with some of those cards you mentioned or to just to use an effect that doesn't target. Mm. So, in Yu Gi Oh! So, there's a lot of cards that don't target, some do. A lot do, and uh, he has protection against it. And on top of that, he's undestructible. So you need to remove it from the field without destroying it. So you can't use something like Dark Coal, which doesn't target, but it still destroys. Yeah, he's really prevalent. A lot of people called for it to be banned. Some people think that this is the problem card. Some people think the card that summons it is the problem card. Red Eyes Fusion, which I don't know if you've read that, but it is quite popular in Duel Links. Red Eyes Fusion is pretty popular in Duel Links, yeah. Yeah, so it's very easy to summon. You're uh, you're two for two right now, so I think you're really spot on. Next card here. This is Painful Choice. This is... Ooh. You know this one? Yeah, this one's a classic. This card was fucking gross. You could do some nutty shit with this. Dude, I am I feel like I've underestimated you or something. You, see, you know what? Way more than I thought you did. Yeah, like I said, when I started like really getting... So... I finished the collection. When I was like collecting these, I was doing like research on them. I was looking up like mm. old combos you could do with some of the broken stuff. Like there's <laughs> the, uh, I think it's Makura the Destroyer or something like that, where you could play yeah. traps immediately. So I was looking up all kinds of like goofy old school shit that would have been possible. Painful Choice had some absolutely wild plays you could do. Yep, that is true. Do you know the, uh, do you know what an errata is? Yeah, they changed the, the text on it. Yeah, so you mentioned Mercuria. That card actually got changed recently. I don't think it was even that good, to be honest, in the first place. It was just a very niche sort of gimmick combo that you could do with it. Well, after the errata, it's completely unplayable. So, yeah, they did destroy Mercuria, but... Yep, this is Painful Choice. Send five cards from your deck to the grave, and then your opponent chooses one. I guess I could argue against you and say that, you know, but you just lose four good cards at your deck, right? But yeah. graveyard effects are a thing, so, you know. Graveyard effects are huge, yeah. yeah. All right, next is Magic Cylinder. It's a battle trap that when your opponent declares an attack, you can target, negate the attack, and then burn them for the damage of the attack points of that monster. I feel like, so this one, I don't really know how it would do in today's meta. I feel like most cards, this wouldn't be a big deal. I, I mean, I, I can't really see too many situations where Magic Cylinder would be super clutch, especially when there's so much removal in the game already. I feel like really wouldn't be that impactful. So I'm just going to put this at like a two. I mean, I guess it could be cool if you do somehow get a clutch magic cylinder, but I feel like it's never going to actually go off. I feel like it'll just get removed or negated. But it's a lot of burn damage, you know, I mean, you can finish someone off with it in the last ditch effort just with a direct attack and a simplified game state, right? 
Well, yeah, I guess if it's like a super simplified state where I'm normal summoning like some nonsense or something or something like a combo is completely busted, I guess. Yeah, you're pretty much where I, I'd, I'd, I'd probably give this a one star out of five. It's uh, almost useless. I think like the only place that this card will ever be relevant again is maybe something like Duel Links where the life points are so low that it yeah. could just straight up kill you. But yeah, no, Magic Cylinder, way past its time. Even back in the day, it wasn't, like, super great. Well, maybe very early you go with burn decks, but... Yeah, no, in a modern Yu-Gi-Oh! age where life points are basically almost free resources, it's not really doing that much, so... Yeah, it doesn't also do much to stall either, so it really doesn't have much of a place, I guess. This is Yadagarasu. It's a spirit monster. Spirit monsters are simply monsters that return to the hand in the end phase, and they can only be normal summoned. So this is Yadagarasu. When it deals damage, your opponent skips their next draw phase. Yada lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yadagarasu had the nutty Yada lock combo. It was, um... Chaos Emperor plus Yadagarasu, right, to pretty much stop your opponent from, like, ever playing the game, right? Wasn't that the combo? It was Chaos Emperor Dragon plus, uh, Witch or Sangan. So, <sighs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you wipe the whole field, and then there's zero cards left, and then on a new chain, Sangan or Witch triggers, searches your Yada, normal summon, attack directly, lock them out of their draw phase. Yep, this... Uh, I did... Re uh, one of the videos I watched talked about why Yada Garasu probably doesn't need to be banned anymore. What do you think? What do I think? Well, I will tell you the context is currently it is banned. But if you give me your rating, I'll I'll see and I'll let you know where where I stand on it. I still think it's a really strong card because I mean skipping a draw phase is still pretty big, even though most combos don't really need a draw. But it's still I think a good resource. I'd put that like a smack dab, like three or four. I could see some times where this would be helpful. I'd say that Yada's maybe like a one, two star card. Really? Uh, yeah, it could definitely come back today. Uh, the problem with Yada Garasu is that it specifically has to be normal summoned. Um, it's not easily searchable um, recently. And setting up a situation where you're able to put this on the board, attack, do the damage, be completely uninterrupted. Even if you do successfully do all of that, your opponent still has the card advantage that they have today of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is one, two, three card interactions. So in the context of the old days, yes, absolutely. But in a modern meta setting, Yadagaras is, I think, a little bit long past its time. That makes sense. Fun fact, though, it is the longest serving card on the ban list. I think it's on Ooh. 11 years or something now. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat, but it is... It, it's the longest banned card ever in the history of the game. Until today. Damn. Yeah. You ready for this one? This ready? is Alter Entity Azathoth. So this is an Xe monster that says, after this was Xe summoned, your opponent cannot activate monster effects for the rest of that turn. Requires three level five monsters, but you can also summon it by using another Alter Entity Xe monster called Nyarla. She only requires two level fours. So a typical way to summon this would be two level fours into Nyarla, into Azathoth. And then as it's summoned, your opponent can activate monster effects the rest of the turn. That's a super strong effect. I just don't know, a, God, not knowing the meta, I don't know how easy it is to bring out the card. It seems like when you get it out though, it kind of goes fucking nuts. Like being able to shut down your opponent's ability to activate effects is big. I feel like that's gotta be impactful. I think the only thing that's gonna make it hard for me to choose a rating is how easy it is to get out there. So the typical way is just any two level four monsters into Nyarla, and then you rank it up with, uh, and you put this on t smack on top of it basically. You make it sound easy. So I'm gonna say it's easy and that's a strong effect to me. I'm just gonna go with like a four. A four. Yeah. Okay. But the thing is, you're just summoning this and then stopping your opponent's monster's effects, like, on your it, turn, right? Like, you summon it on your turn and then, right? Like, your opponent it, isn't going to use many monster effects on your turn, right? Surely, right? There's a lot of monsters that can be used on your opponent's turn. We were even just talking about, um... Does, Zeus can be used on your opponent's turn, right? You can pretty much use um, most of, like, the big ones on your opponent's turn, the ones that are, like, fucking nuts. That's got to be super helpful. <laughs> yeah. So, as a thought, is a card that has, uh, I think was released and then banned maybe like one or two formats after it came out. It's uh, basically the typical standard way to use this is that in a typical combo deck, a very popular deck that utilized this was Lunalite, and it was a, pretty much a rank four XE spam deck. Make a rank four into Nyarla, go into this, on summon, your opponent can activate monster effects for the rest of that turn. So what that protected you from wasn't that you would summon it into an established board like Azathoth, for example. It would be blocking your opponent from using any hand traps. So no effect veiler, no ash blossom. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, oh yeah. shit. 
That is really <laughs> the context of why this was broken, is that it would completely freeze all of your opponent's hand traps. And then after you make this, then you play out the rest of your turn and your opponent just cannot physically activate a card. God damn. All right. That's fucking nuts. All right. Four was too low. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's definitely cannot ever come back. Like you will, you will never see this with the in the right uh, in the light of day. Um, another uh, you know very common use of this was um, there are quick play rank up spells. You could set up an XE monster without XE material and use something like a rank up quick launch, which would summon it on your opponent's turn. So your opponent begins their turn. You rank up into this. And now they have to play their turn without using monster effect. Sounds fucking wild. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you said this was only legal for how long? I feel like two or three formats, right, chat? It did. It came out, and I think Lunalight basically like made this absurd, and then it was immediately banned. Right? Mm. Was it longer than that? Wow. Yeah, I guess there wasn't really many decks that took a that abused it too well. So apparently, it was out for like one or two years. But once people caught caught on, it was uh, <laughs> it wasn't a fun way to play. I bet. Yeah, it just locks you out. I have this one here for you. This is Card Trader, which I. I believe uh, you're aware of as a vendor. Once per turn, during your standby, shuffle a card from your hands in the deck and draw one. Pretty simple card advantage and mulliganing away bad cards in your hand for new ones. Yeah, really card advantage though, right? You play a card and then you get, like this costs a card. Well, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't <laughs> Let's imagine. Let's do some math. Let's do some math. <laughs> I can't imagine this is like a very helpful card. Why not? You trade out a bad card in your hand and you draw a good card. At the cost of another card though. Like I can't imagine that being worth it. I'm gonna uh... say this is I'm gonna say this is a stinker. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is gonna be low. Yeah, this card's basically useless. So if you really think about it though, the way it gets even worse when you imagine it isn't just like it just sits there doing nothing while you kinda just trade one card for another card. It's the fact that you have to activate it in your main phase wait a turn, wait until your next turn, draw a card, stand by, then you get the value. Which isn't really value because it isn't plussing you, it's just kind of rating, right? Yeah, you just, you're spending a card in order to get rid of a shitty card. Yep, exactly. And you had a shitty card with this one already. <laughs> right. You had exactly. two bad cards and you get to fix one. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it, exactly. Uh, final card is this. This is Magispector Unicorn Kirin. Have you learned what pendulums do yet and how they function? Yeah, I, I... Vaguely. They seem a little tough for my baby reptile brain. Like, in <laughs> practice, it's a lot to, like, process. But I get the gist of a pendulum summon. So do you know what these numbers here mean? Yeah, that's the scales. Right. So you have your scales left and right. The direction is irrelevant, but the numbers matter. So if this is a 2, and then in the other scale you have, like, an 8, it means any number between 2 and 8, you can perform a Pendulum Summon out of your hand and one from your extra deck, depending on the Link zones. Are you familiar with Links? Links, I'm still not super familiar with. No, that's the next one that I need to learn. So basically, in general, you summon one out of your extra deck and then any from your hand up to all of your monster zones. So you just like splash out a bunch of monsters in one turn. And this is Kirin. Uh, he doesn't have a Pendulum effect, but his monster effect is that it's a quick effect to bounce a Pendulum monster and bounce a monster your opponent controls. It also can't be targeted or destroyed. I think that sounds really strong. I think it sounds super strong. It has protection. It also has a way of returning a monster. Like, that's pretty good. Like, it doesn't destroy them, which a lot of cards have protection against. I don't know how many modern meta cards have, like, just general all around, like, you can't even target or touch this card. So I'm going to say this is probably going to be a really strong one. I'm going to go with, like, a, like a, I don't want to say five, because I don't think it's a five, but probably, like, a high four. Well, dude, I just want to say that you've absolutely stumped me this time. I, your meta knowledge is exceeding that of some of the great duelists of our own generation, my friend. This, uh, <laughs> you, you've basically got everything like 100% accurate, you know? So, good job. Thank <laughs> you're, you. Uh, you're, you're, you're spot on on these. I told you, man, ever since like really getting into the collecting, I've been trying to research the game. And when Ma Master Duel was announced, I was like, it's time. This is where I'm going to fucking pop off. I'm going to be one of the best duelists. So I've been doing research day by day, trying to get a handle on the how everything works now. Have you jumped into any duels like at all online? Not TCG. And I, like I said, I recently kicked the Duel Links habit in favor of waiting for Master Duel. So you mentioned like, uh, you know, you're, you're saving up for Master Duel and stuff, but you know, you could you could play on Omega and you could play on um, Dueling Book, which I don't know if you're super interested in playing in a manual simulator with the cesspool that that place is. But 
you know. Yeah, I've seen some of your pictures on the manual. No, no, thank you. You put the fear <laughs> of God in me there. I'm not going in any manual shit, no sir. <laughs> True. Okay, that's fair. Uh.